soon as these buildings were completed, workers moved in from their quarters aboard the ships, which then left for home. These comfortable structures would later be used by troops. The modern mess hall, like the barracks, was put to instant use by the hard-working construction crews. While one shift was being served breakfast, the second shift on the other side of the mess hall was eating its evening meal. This careful planning for the personal needs of the men was reflected in everything from recreational facilities to church services. This close attention to morale paid off in the fantastic speed of construction. Work crews raced against the waning light and the increasing cold, hurrying to meet the deadline now only a few weeks away. Three distillation plants and their storage tanks to brew drinking water from the salt sea popped up magically. Along with vehicle storage buildings, salvage building, crash wagon station. On October 1st, with about 20 days left to go, Blue Jay was host to Lieutenant General Curtis LeMay, Chief of the Strategic Air Command. Briefed by Colonel Clarence Renshaw, Northeast District Engineer, he carefully studied the base. The final touches were put on the airstrip. A top coat of asphalt was laid down. The control tower rose to the sky. Electric light cables were paid out. And the runway lights were planted in the ground. The long Arctic night was closing in. Warning shadows deepened on the frigid peaks that surrounded Blue Jay. The waters of Thule Harbor disappeared as ice choked the bay. Snow and sleet storms lashed the job site. The Arctic winter had arrived, but the deadline had been met. The greatest engineering operation ever undertaken in the far north had been rushed to successful completion. At the first break in the winter weather, the work crews checked out for home, filled with the intense satisfaction that comes of a job well done. They had defied some of the worst climate and working conditions in the world to set an unbelievable record. In 104 days, they had built a giant runway capable of serving our heaviest bombers. Blue Jay was operational. It is almost a year later now, and Blue Jay has had the benefit of another construction season to bring it up to top fighting trim. Blue Jay will be kept ready for action as long as the threat that drove us to build it exists. We cannot read the minds of those dark and shadowy figures who brood on war and conquest. But perhaps the thought of this colossal air base has caused them to falter in their plans for aggression. Perhaps they have read a different kind of warning in the miracle of Blue Jay, the warning that there is nothing, absolutely nothing, impossible to American resourcefulness hard work, and plain guts. That there is no problem or enemy, nature or man-made, that this country cannot defeat in its stern resolve to protect its freedom. Blue Jay is a great example of what this country can do when the chips are down. It should be an inspiration to all Americans, our friends and allies. Now speaking from Washington, here is the Chief of the Army Engineers, Major General Samuel D. Sturgis, Jr. The picture that you have just witnessed, Operation Blue Jay, is typical of the construction task being performed throughout the world today by the Corps of Engineers of the United States Army and the construction industry of the United States. In this day and age, this country must be prepared immediately to defend itself. Fortunately, we have a unique arrangement in our system, whereby the civil works of the country are constructed in every state in the Union 
by an organization in being known as the Civil Works of the Corps of Engineers. It was this organization that stepped into the gap in the construction of the Thule Air Base and planned and directed the remarkable achievement that you have just witnessed. In fact, the Corps of Engineers, your Corps of Army Engineers, stands ready in the future to meet crises just as it has in the past, both in peace and war, for the development and for the security of our nation. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the big picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.